Let's settle down for Sunday school, please. <clears throat> I have peace like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river in my soul. I have peace like a river. Peace like a river peace like a river in my soul it's time for sunday school let's settle down please i have joy like a river joy like a river joy like a river in my soul I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we just thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet this morning. We thank you, Father, for we are here because you kept us from last week even up till now. A lot of water has passed under the bridge, but you kept us. Father, we bless your holy name. We pray that you give us understanding hearts and hearing ears in the name of Jesus. Father, give me unction in your words this morning. Let me speak like your oracle. At the end of everything, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last week, we treated the topic divine resistance divine resistance our bible reading was taken from first peter chapter 5 verses 5 to 7 while our memory verse was taken from james chapter 4 verse 6 and i'll remind us it says but he giveth more grace
And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. He hated his brother for many years for taking away his birthright and taking away his blessing. That is what strife can cause. It can cause hate and disunity. Strife brings disharmony among the flock of Christ. It brings disharmony among the flock of Christ. In Acts chapter 15 verses 35 to 39, we read the account of Paul and Barnabas and John Mark. It says, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between Paul and Barnabas that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But thank God that this, you know, by this uh, contention and this strife, you know, was brought under control. Because by the time we got to 2 Timothy, Apostle Paul was singing John Mark's praises again. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, he said, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Strife can lead to destruction. Strife can lead to destruction. Galatians 5.15 says, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. The New Living Translation of that scripture says, But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Okay? Those are the effects of strife. Let's quickly look at the agents of strife. What are the things that trigger uh, strife to action? What, what are the things that encourage strife? Pride is number one agent of strife. Pride. In Proverbs 28, 25a, it says, He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Anger or wrath is another agent of strife. In Proverbs 29, verse 22, it says, An angry man stirreth up strife. And a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Proverbs 15, 18 also says, A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Praise the name of the Lord. Backbiting is an agent of strife. Proverbs 16, 28 says, A froward man swears strife, and a whisperer, a whisperer, a backbiter separateth chief friends. The New Living Translation of that says, A troublemaker Plant seed of strife. Gossips separate the best of friends. Tell tales. Tell tales. Also is an agent of strife. It encourages strife. In Proverbs 26, verse 20 says, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. So the tail bearer is like wood to fire. It just make, you know, makes the strife to continue to increase and expand. Praise the name of the Lord. We will not be tail bearers in the name of Jesus. Argument is another agent of strife. Argument. First Timothy 6 4 says, He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of what? Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. The New Living Translation of that scripture says, Anyone who teaches anything different is both conceited and ignorant. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. This tears up arguments ending in jealousy, fighting, slander, and evil suspicions. Proverbs 26, 21 is another scripture. Envy. Envy is another agent of strife. In James 3, 14, we are told, But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, Glory not and lie not against the truth. Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians 1, 15 is another uh, scripture that we must consider. It says, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Unhealthy rivalry 
It's another agent of strife. It encourages strife, unhealthy rivalry. More than anything, it encourages strife. Luke 22, 24 says, And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Okay? That's, I mean, between the disciples of Jesus. The New Living Translation of that says, And they began to argue among themselves as to who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Unteachable spirit, unteachable spirit, also is an agent of, of, of strife. Proverbs 13.10, New International Version says, Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. We must be teachable. We must not assume that we know it all. We must allow ourselves to have a teachable spirit. Evil desires, evil desires also is an agent of strife. James 4, verse 1. I will, I will read from the New International Version. It says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Evil desires is an agent of strife. It, 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 it encourages strife. Praise the name of the Lord. In our first class activity, we are told to describe strife in one word. Strife in one word. We can say strife is fiction, friction. Strife is conflict. Strife is discord. Any of those words aptly describes strife. Praise the name of the Lord. Our second lesson outline, we're looking at the right resolution of strife. How do we resolve strife if it happens? And um, the first point we're looking at here is that we prevent and stay away from strife Preventing and staying away from strife must be a personal resolve and a responsibility that we must be willing to take up. We must be deliberate about it. Philippians 2, 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Therefore, we must intentionally work at it and confront it when we see it when we see strife anywhere, we must confront it by consciously and consistently saying no to it. Proverbs 20, verse 3. Proverbs 20, verse 3 says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. It is an honor. It's an honorable man that refuses to fight at every opportunity, that refuses to strive you know, with uh, another man over anything. He just leaves it and goes away, just like uh, our father Abraham did with Lot. He said, just take any one you like and, you know, whatever you take, I'll take the other one. Okay? It is an honor. It is a sign of honor. The second point, you know, here about resolving strife is that we must avoid needless arguments. Needless arguments. In Proverbs seventeen fourteen. We are told the beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it before it be meddled with. Praise the name of the Lord. So we must avoid needless arguments. The third point we have under the resolution is that we must do away with bitterness, conflict, violent disagreement. You know, as human beings still living in this, in this body, we know that from time to time there will be disagreements, okay? But we must not let our disagreements lead to bitterness. We must not let it lead to conflict. We must not let it be violent. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews 12, 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Be a strife stopper like Abraham. Be a strife stopper. Verse 8 of the text that we read. Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. Be a strife stopper. Praise the name of the Lord. The fifth point under resolution is that we must refuse to backbite or be a part of those who foment trouble. Uh, and um, brethren, in church, 
we need to really pay attention to this. We must not be backbiters. We must not be found among people who speak ill against other people behind their backs. We must not be backbiter. If you see a fault in a, in a brother, in a sister, you know, call the brother or sister and tell them prayerfully, lovingly, or you just begin to pray for them. Let us, we, we must not be backbiters in, in church. Psalm 15 verse 3 says, He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. We are still talking about resolution of strife. We must be the first to resolve issues. Don't wait for your brother or your sister say, if he doesn't come to me, I will not go to him. If she doesn't come to me, I will not go to him. Be the first. Be the first to resolve issues. Matthew 5, 23 to 24 says, Therefore, if thou bring any gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So it's saying that even if you are praying, and you remember that, oh, you have a problem with this brother, leave your offering on the altar, go back, reconcile with your brother, and then come and continue your prayer, so that your prayers may be answered. The seventh point under resolution is that we must learn how to disagree peaceably. Like I said, we are human beings, we are still in this, in this, um, in this flesh, so we would, there will be disagreements, but we must learn to do it peaceably. Romans 12, 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Not even with just the brethren, with all men. Okay, praise the name of the Lord. The second major category under resolution is that we must know that unity is another major requirement needed to keep strife out of our lives and our relationships. Psalm 133 verse 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Jesus, in his prayers for his disciples and all who would accept his lordship and mastership in John 17, 22, asked the Father to make them, that is us, you and I, the church, to make us one as he and his Father are one. Praise the name of the Lord. John 17, 22 says, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Praise the name of the Lord. Unity brings positive results. It makes us to achieve collective goals. Let's look at Genesis 11, verses 5 to 6. Genesis 11, 5 to 6. And the Lord God came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Because of unity, because of unity, even the people who are building the Tower of Babel were able to build the tower to almost reach heaven. And God said concerning them that because they united, nothing Will, will be withheld from them, which they have imagined to do. Unity is very powerful in the body of Christ. Psalm 133, verses 2 to 3 says that unity brings anointing, it brings refreshing, and it brings blessings. Psalm 133, verses 2 to 3 says, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So unity is very, very key. Especially in the church, unity is key. Because it brings answers to our prayers. It facilitates answers to our prayers. It brings anointing. It brings refreshing from the presence of God. When you see a church where there's disunity, where there's strife, you will not find you will not find those things. You will not find anointing. You will not find refreshing. You will not find the blessings of God. So unity is very key, and that was why when Jesus was about to leave this earth, the most important prayer that he prayed for his disciples 
and he prayed this with all his heart, is that the church must be united. His disciples and the church that is coming, you know, must be united. So we must be united. We must be united so that anointing can continue to flow. Miracle signs and wonders can continue to flow in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Our second lesson activity says, how have you been avoiding strife as a believer? Because we must avoid strife as a believer. So as a believer, let's not seek to be right all the time. Let's not seek to be right all the time. Let's know that sometimes, sometimes other people may have superior opinion. As a believer, let's realize that we must take nonsense sometimes without even talking or retaliating or saying, don't you know who I am? We must take nonsense. If you see somebody who's saying, I don't take nonsense, I don't, you know that that person is not yet a broken, a broken Christian, a broken believer. We must take nonsense. Okay? From spouses, from colleagues at work, from brethren in church who are even younger than you and got born again after you and yet are your heads of departments. We must take nonsense. Jesus took nonsense on the way to the cross. The Bible says, and he opened not his mouth. He focused on his purpose. In Isaiah 53 verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus took nonsense. If Jesus took nonsense, then sometimes we will take nonsense. Because if we don't take nonsense, who do we want to resemble? Definitely not our master Jesus. They will not be bastards in Jesus' name. In conclusion, strife is a work of the flesh. And it must be kicked out to build unity and to achieve giant strides in life and in ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Say, Father, I receive the grace to avoid strife in the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty Father, thank you for the lesson of today. Holy Spirit, please continue to expound the subject and importance of today's lesson in our hearts and help us to love one another and to always work for the unity of the brethren in the name of Jesus. Help us to be strife quenchers and not strife enablers in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that this message will not stand against us in judgment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity to give, to give an offering today. Father, bless the works of our hands and the pockets from which we have taken the offerings. And let what we have given be the least that we will ever give in the name of Jesus. Cause it to be used in the expansion of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Paradventure, there are some among us who would like to give but do not have anything to give. Please provide seed to the sower and bread to the eater so that when next we come together, they will have something to give. Thank you, Father, for we know you have answered our prayers for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For those of our online members who wish to give their Sunday school offerings, please pay into our Zenith Bank account, 10116141170. The name of the account is RCCG, Dominion Sanctuary, Acme. Thank you for joining us to learn at the feet of Jesus during Sunday school today. We trust that you have been blessed even as we have. And we hope to see you again next Sunday with your friends, your neighbors, and members of your family. God bless you. Shalom. Sunday school teachers, please be